Hi everyone, my name is Anton Pelcher. I'm an engineer and I've been building fish farms for more than 10 years. Today we're going to have a very interesting video. You will learn how to increase the capacity of a mini rice farm almost twice and how to grow 30 tons of African catfish per year within the area of 100 square meters. So here we go. We were approached by our client, whom we designed and set up a farm last year. It's a small African catfish rice farm with a capacity of about 50-20 tons a year. He wanted to increase the capacity of his farm. There were two main reasons for this. The first was sales. He finally administered sales and increased them. Well, I think it's normal within one year. And the existing capacity is no longer enough to cover all his customers' needs. Secondly, his rented area is expensive. And since the rental rate is fixed, he needs to squeeze the maximum out of this farm. And of course, he doesn't yet have the ability or desire to expand and to relocate the farm, to construct his own building. So he decided to try to solve this issue in the simplest possible way and to try to expand, to increase the efficiency and productivity of the existing farm. So he addressed this question to me. And I decided to visit his farm and see what could be done and whether it would be possible at all. So let's go. I'm going to show you around the farm and we are going to figure out how to get the most out of a small African catfish farm. So, I'm now at the very farm where the African catfish is grown. It's a small system, which is located in a big building, with all sorts of different organizations, which are also renting some space here. The farm only takes up to 5% of the total building area, about 200 square meters, half of which is used for storage, utility rooms, operator's room, and the other half, the very room I'm standing in right now, is rice itself. From 15 to 20 tons of fish per year are grown in this system. The farm consists of seven fish holding tanks, four of which are for grow-out fish, they are 2.40 meters in diameter and 1.50 meters high, with a total volume of 6 cubic meters of each. And also, there are three small tanks, 2 meters in diameter and 1.5 meters high. Two of them are fry tanks and the other two are used for purging. The total volume of water in all the fish tanks at this farm is 36 cubic meters. I will not consider in detail the equipment of this farm. I will focus on the challenges. The task is simple – to increase the productivity of the farm. We discussed everything with the owner, went through several options. Then we identified the main four. The first option is going the beaten path, which means extensive expansion. That is, we put additional equipment, tanks, perhaps using some extra area, perhaps even here. But we immediately dismissed this option, as it requires serious additional investment, and it takes time. And the product, which is grow our African catfish, is needed now. The second option is to change the production plan. What is it? I think many people know. It's fish moving and transferring in the system. We've looked deeply into this option. Right now, the situation is as follows. The basic plan. It assumes stocking once every three months, growing fish up to 1.5 kg, start of sales, and then gradual sales till the fish reaches the weight of 3 kg. And then one cycle replaces the other. In this way, the farm works all year round. Now stocking takes place not every three months, but every month, and still there is not enough fish. That that's why there is no time to play and experiment with the production plan. That is, no matter how you change it, the capacity will not increase. The third option is to stock the system with large juveniles. That is to change the fish farming plan so that they don't stock with fry, but for example with on-ground juveniles of 100-200 grams. It seems to be a good option. It will really increase the turnover, but due to the fact that juveniles are already on-grown, they are more expensive and more difficult to find, so the cost of production will increase. In fact, this option is not of special interest to the owner. And then there is the last option. It seems fairly trivial. It's simply to increase stocking density in the tanks. For such relatively small rest farms, we usually take stocking density of 200-250 kg for African catfish. And it's the maximum indicated in the production plan. Well, I think many of you who are knowledgeable in African catfish farming know that its stocking density can be up to 350 and even 400 kg per cubic meter. So the only adequate solution, which can be applied right here and right now, was to increase this density. That is, in terms of space, we can't install additional tanks, and the equipment is not designed for larger number of tanks, so we simply increased the stocking density. But once we do that, naturally some problems will emerge. 
Which ones? We increased the biomass of fish by one and a half times. And thus we increased by one and a half times the feeding and the load on the system as a whole. Then another situation comes out. Res equipment that has already been installed won't be enough. And the key point in all this story is to think how we can replace the equipment we have the minimum effort, minimum additional investments, in order to get 30 tons per year instead of 15-20 tons. By the way, 30 tons per year is the objective maximum for this system. We've calculated that from one cubic meter it's possible to get about one ton of fish per year at most. So we have adjusted the fish farming plan, and now instead of 200-250 kg per cubic meter, they can grow 300-350 kg. And in one year, with gradual farming and sales, this could reach the capacity of 30 tons. Now let's figure out what kind of problems they will face if they dramatically increase the maximum biomass by one and a half to two times. Let's go through the parameters which the calculation was based on. Here the water exchange is one to another per hour. In principle, even with the total biomass of 350 50 kg per cubic meter, it's normal. One water exchange per hour is quite fine for African catfish. Oxygen. As it's widely known, African catfish doesn't need oxygen. So we have not supplied it, and there is no point in supplying it now. Water disinfection is also optional. African catfish lives fine without it. Therefore, we don't need to do anything about disinfection either. What is really needed to be done? Two things. The first is to think about a mechanical water treatment system in advance to increase stocking density. African catfish emits a lot of impurities into the water. If if we increase the biomass by one and a half to two times, there will be an incredible amount of suspended solids, which could clog filters, and these guys will have problems. And the second thing is, of course, ammonia concentration level. As soon as fish starts to eat more, emit more fecal matter into the water, ammonia will be released, and the biofilters are not designed for this amount of biomass inside the tanks, for such amount of suspended solids. So we have to prevent this problem as well. Then what can be done about it? Let's sort out the mechanical water treatment issue first. We discussed everything with the owner, and there are several options to prevent problems in the future. The first option is to provide for additional swirl filters connected to the tanks. That is, now there is a side drain from the tanks and the water flows directly to the thin layer settling tank, where the coarse suspended solids are sedimented. If we put additional swirl filters as a separate line or install them into the existing line, some of you may be guessing what swirl filters are. There are tanks with a conical bottom, in which water moves in a circular mode. All coarse suspended solids fall down to the cone bottom, and the filtered water is discharged from the top of the filter. Swirl filters trap a certain amount of suspended solids, so it alleviates the load on mechanical filters. This is the first solution. And the second solution, which can be applied in addition to the first, is, shall we say, an experimental solution. This solution may or may not be applied. We haven't decided that yet. We're only discussing it with our customer. And that is installing a zonation system. What is that for? Here, ozone is only needed to coagulate the suspended sediment. African catfish emits impurities and also mucus. It's in the fractions of different size. And ozone helps to coagulate all that. Thus, we suggested to provide for a minimum dose of 3-5 grams of ozone per 1 kilogram of feed and see how it works. In principle, at sturgeon and trout farms, ozone coagulates suspended solids very efficiently. Therefore, we assume that if ozonation units are installed, it will coagulate them, so that they will be trapped more easily by all the types of mechanical water treatment units – swirl filters, thin layers handling tank, and drum filter. By the way, if you know any other options how to solve this problem, I would be very interested to learn about them. Be sure to write in the comments and we will discuss with you. Well, there are two basic options that can be applied at this farm. There is also a sinking meter filter at this farm, but it won't affect the situation a lot. So the options are the two ones enhancing the efficiency of mechanical water treatment, and I have told you about them. Next, how to solve the issue of biological water treatment, which means water treatment from excessive ammonia. What can be done? Well, as an elementary solution, we need to increase the capacity of the biofilter. There are several options that we are considering. The first is simply to add efficient media into the existing biofilters. For example, some kind of biochips with a surface area of 5000 square meters per cubic meter. There is a risk that biofilters can get clogged at increasing stocking density at an African catfish farm. That means micropores can get clogged. By the way, if any of you have already used biofilters, be sure to write about it. The second option is to remove the existing media, which is a surface area of 900 square meters per cubic meter, and replace it with a more efficient one. In principle, it could be rather a good option. And the third option is to remove sinking media from the filter, install diffusers at the bottom, and load high-quality moving bed, which has larger surface area. So these are three solutions that we see and consider. 
By the way, which one do you like best? How would you solve the problem of mechanical suspended solids and biological impurities when increasing farm capacity? So, friends, I have come back to Moscow, opened the fish farming plan of this farm and expanded it up to 30 tons as needed, without increasing the number of tanks, without increasing the facility area. If you are interested to see how it works, what this production plan is, download it following the link in the description. And of course, follow the coming videos on my channel. This video will soon be continued, because I will certainly show you the system after its upgrade and expansion. We will see how it operates, whether it will solve the problems with the increase in biomass. I hope it will. So, if you liked this video, keep an eye on the coming videos, press the like button, subscribe to my channel. It was Anton Pelcher and my channel on how to grow fish and make good money from it. Bye!